Like it or not, content is everywhere and quickly becoming everything. And the pressure to create high quality content has never been higher. Enter the Zoom H5 Studio Portable Recorder. Now, I know what you're thinking. Portable audio recorders like this are nothing new. In fact, Zoom are somewhat pioneers in this space. But what makes the H5 Studio great is that it incorporates some of their best features from their F-Series field recorders in an updated H-Series form factor. First up, if you're new to portable audio recorders, I'm gonna explain who the H5 Studio is for. And if you're not new to this world, bear with me for just a second, and I promise I'll discuss the features and improvements found in this model in greater detail. Now, for my friends who have just joined the portable audio recorder chat, the H5 Studio is tailor-made for solo creators across many different content areas and is loaded with features designed to make capturing high-quality audio accessible to everyone. In a nutshell, it comes with the largest mic capsules ever found on a portable audio recorder, which for you means that your recordings will have a lot of detail. And on top of this, the recorder has 32-bit float capability, which is akin to an audio safety net that will give you usable recordings every time, whether you're dealing with super loud or whisper quiet sounds, and even if you make a mistake setting levels. Now, if you're an old sage when it comes to portable recorders, let me share some more details of what you can expect with the H5 Studio. Starting off with the included XY microphone cartridge, the capsules are set at a fixed 90 degree orientation, and you'll notice that these are larger than those found in previous H-Series recorders. Each capsule features a 19.4 millimeter diaphragm, which is right on the cusp of what many see as the line between small and large diaphragm in a microphone. These are the largest diaphragm capsules that can be found in any portable recorder, and their size means increased sensitivity with a dynamic range of 123 decibels, and they can handle sound pressure levels up to 140 decibels. Couple these specs with the additional two XLR TRS combo inputs and the same preamps found in Zoom's F-Series field recorders, along with 32-bit float A to D conversion, and you've got a setup which can handle practically any situation with a minimum of operation or fuss. To give you an idea of how the H5 Studio performs if you're looking to record natural or location sound, I took it out to capture some New York City ambiance. Let's take a listen. So New York City, Andrew here, we're out uh, putting the H5 Studio through its paces on the streets of New York City, capturing some ambient sounds. And one thing that I did realize when I came out today is that it, it is a little windy out here and there is a bit of wind noise in the capsules and I did not have a dead cat with me. So I had to get creative and did use my beanie, uh, which helped cut down. I can actually do it now and test it out. So you can hear that it helped cut down some of that wind that was on there. So you'll see this in some of the shots. The H5 Studio can record at sample rates up to 192 kilohertz at either 16, 24, or 32-bit float resolution. The big change here over some other models in the Zoom H series is the ability to record 32-bit float and use the digital gain knobs. Since the H5 Studio is capable of recording discrete tracks for each input, as well as a stereo mix of all channels simultaneously, you can take advantage of the massive dynamic range that recording a 32-bit float affords to avoid clipping, providing you're not overloading the microphone capsule, of course, and do a live stereo mix with the gain knobs. Now, I know some of you keen audio nerds will be clutching your pearls at the thought of mixing with gain knobs, as was I. However, in 32-bit float mode, these knobs are not controlling the analog gain stage pre-analog to digital conversion. That's fixed, so you'll get clip-free conversion for your recordings. Instead, these knobs control post-analog to digital gain. So while they do impact the level of your recording, your file will never be uh, cooked, as the young folks say, even if you get a little heavy-handed because of the dynamic range available in 32-bit float mode. You can think of this as being akin to color correcting raw footage versus footage shot in a compressed codec. 
The compressed codec doesn't allow as much manipulation before the image falls apart, whereas the raw footage gives way more latitude even if your white balance is completely off. If your recording was done at 32-bit float, and when you bring your files into a DAW or an NLE to do post work, you find that your mix bus or the channel is clipping on playback in the mixer, you'll be able to lower the clip gain in the software, which will reveal an unclipped file. Inversely, if you recorded in 32-bit float on the H5 Studio and had the gain control turned all the way down, the apparent result would be silence but if you import that file into your DAW or NLE and add 90 decibels of clip gain, it will reveal the recording with no additional noise added like there would be with a 16 or 24 bit recording. The two inch full color LCD shows a waveform and audio meters and you can monitor while recording via the headphone jack. There's also a handy speaker for checking your recordings. All of the optional capsules that work with Zoom's H6 Essential will also work with the H5 Studio and currently there's the SSH6E mono slash stereo shotgun, which can record mid-side. This is a demo of the Zoom SSH6E optional mono slash stereo shotgun capsule. And when you connect this capsule to the Zoom H5 Studio, you're gonna get access to a mid-side raw mode as well. So you can record mono, you can record stereo or mid-side raw, which is how I'm recording right now. And the advantage of recording mid-side raw is that you can adjust the balance between the center channel and the sides in post. And what I'm gonna do as I'm speaking is increase the level of the sides so you can hear more of the ambience of the city and the sounds that are around me. And don't worry, this is not a New York squirrel that's on the microphone here. This is the included windscreen that comes with the SSH-6E. And the EXH-6E external input module, which provides two more XLR TRS inputs. Incidentally, the built-in XLR TRS inputs can provide phantom power. And this goes for the EXH-6E input module also. The H5 Studio records to micro SD cards, and it can also be used as a USB-C audio interface for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac devices. Zoom's voice guidance accessibility system is also included which makes operations simple for visually impaired creators by speaking through menu items during navigation and providing reference clicks for headphone volume adjustments. The optional BTA1 Bluetooth adapter provides compatibility with Zoom's control and sync app, allowing you to connect multiple H5 studios and control and sync them remotely. And speaking of sync, Zoom will be releasing the TCA1 timecode adapter later in 2025 which will generate timecode and output timecode to a camera or jam to a timecode clock. Both the BTA1 and upcoming TCA1 will allow receiving wireless timecode from the Atomos UltraSync Blue. The H5 Studio can be powered using four AA batteries. In terms of battery life, you'll get the longest battery life with lithium, then nickel metal hydride, and then alkaline. According to Zoom, this unit will operate up to 15 hours on alkaline batteries with phantom power off, but in the event you do run out of juice, the H5 Studio can also be powered via USB-C. So what are your thoughts on the Zoom H5 Studio? Can you see yourself using this to record gigs and performances, or would it help simplify audio capture for wedding videos and event coverage? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Andrew with B&H inviting you to always remember audio.